London's Royal Albert Hall, a team of 16 all-star top professional wrestlers are going to be doing battle in that ring. All the big names are here. There's Rollerball Rocco, the man they call public enemy number one, Johnny Saint, the world lightweight champion, even Big Daddy's here, all 24 and a half stone of him, all 60 inches around the waist of him. And there's one name on the bill that is brand new, a young man who has never wrestled professionally in a ring before in his life. He's always watched wrestling from outside those ropes, but tonight he takes a step inside that ring. He's 27, he's a school teacher from Burnley in Lancashire, and for Keith Rawlinson, this is the big time. Methodist Church in Burnley. It's where you'll find Keith and his wife Judy every Sunday. There can't be many organists who, like Keith, find satisfaction in the violence of wrestling and inspiration in the Word of God. I try and live as I think I ought to live, and as it's laid down in the Bible. That's not going to stop me trying to bash hell out of an opponent in a wrestling match. Well, I wonder. I mean, it was St. Matthew who said, what is it? Blessed are the meek and blessed are the merciful. There's oh, nothing am, meek I and am. merciful in wrestling. I am meek, really, and merciful. Um, no, I think, uh, I'm hoping that once I get inside a wrestling ring, uh, I'm hoping a bit of a change will come over me. It's got to. <laughs> There'll be no room for mercy or meekness. Now we're landing. Very good, very good. Rough and ready. That's how Keith describes the kids he teaches. That roughness, he lets them work out at the wrestling club he runs. His theory? Better to let them fight here than on the streets. Now that is a submission move. And if you he can teach them a lot of wrestling theory, but he's never wrestled himself. It's still a dream. I've always been a wrestler in my mind. I know that's just fantasy, and I, I want to turn fantasy into fact. What do you mean you've always been a wrestler in your mind? Well, every time I see a wrestling match, I, 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 I am one of the wrestlers. When, I'm, when I sit there, I normally side with, with the goodies. And every time the body sort of does a foul, I feel it for the wrestler. I feel it just as much as the wrestler does. And so I'm, I am involved, and I, I have been a wrestler. Why? Because you're not a big lad, are you? I don't know. I, I, I must admit, I think it's the violence, actually, which is a dreadful thing to have to say. But I think everybody needs some outlet for, um, to get rid of the pent-up emotions, you know, and all the rest of it. And. Um, I think that uh, I get rid of mine by watching wrestling. So you, you think deep down <laughs> Keith is a violent lad? Oh, I think he has a violent side, yes, I really do. I think most people probably do. How much acting do you think there is in wrestling? Oh, I think people believe that uh, a lot of it is, is for show. And in fact, I've been speaking to people about what I'm going to do, and they sort of say, oh, well done, it'll be a real laugh, won't it? But I know it's not going to be a real laugh at all, because people do get hurt, no doubt about it. I don't give a damn what the doctor says, he must be there. Mike's Crabtree, top wrestling promoter. He'll promote Keith's fight at the Albert Hall if Keith can prove to him he's got the one thing that all wrestlers must have. Uh, the man's got to have a lot of bottle. Uh, it's a type of courage to be able to go in and dish out the treatment and also take it. To be able to get off the floor when somebody smacks you in the nose and your nose starts bleeding. And somebody's got you in an excruciating hold on the floor and you feel that your leg's gonna drop off. And uh, it's being able to fight out of it and get up and have a go. That's bottle. He's going to put Keith into the ring with a professional. He's not looking for skill, he's looking for bottle. What's Keith going to do when he gets into the ring for the first time? Well, I've tried to think about it. It's a bit hard, really. Um, I'm going to try and get the fella over and get him down on the mat. How are you going to do that? Oh, well, I'm going to twist his arm round his... He's not listening, is he? No, right, I'll twist his arm round, you see, and hopefully he'll have to bend himself forward, then I shall come in front of him, 
my arm round his back, top of his shoulders, and pull Hunt with a bit of luck, he should go on the map. It's going to be as easy as that. <laughs> well, I think so. Have you heard of something called bottle? Something you drink? No. <laughs> they talk about bottle in the wrestling game. It's sort of courage. Mm. Do, do you think you've got the bottle to go through with this? You can change your mind still. Oh, no, no, I want, I want to do it very, very much. I think when I get in the ring, I think this bottle or whatever you say just might come over me. I hope so. This is what I'm hoping for anyway. So no second thoughts? Oh, no, no. He hasn't seen his opponent yet. Legs as thick as tree trunks and a body like a Sherman tank. Cyanide Sid Cooper. Have you done any combat at all? Not really. None at all? Mm. I see. What we'll do then, Keith, I'll show you what I'd like you to try to do. Mm. And we'll take it step by step, eh? Mm. This man, Cooper, will go on the defence. Yeah. I want you to put him down on the floor. Yeah. Right. Take hold. So I'm pulling down to put his, put his shoulders on the canvas. He's only on the defence, he won't attack you. Now come on, Keith, get your balance, face him straight. Please. Come on. Well. First lesson, Keith, don't try anything you can't do. Alright, now get your balance first, get your legs in right position. Now look at him, get your arms up, link up. Come on, put some bloody muscle into it, lad. That's the way, that's good. Break it. Come on, go, Bill. Let him get up. On your feet, up, lad. Not bad, you're trying. How are you feeling? A bit of uh, breath. A bit of breath, too, well. I'll get used to it in a minute. It's all right. I want you to try a couple of drop kicks. All right, Keith. I want you to see if you can drop kick his hand. Two feet up in there. Oh, yes. You know what a drop kick? If you've watched it, you know what it's all about. This is what wrestling's about. I never tried one. Well, go on. Let's have a go. Get up. Go on, get up. 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 Go on, Keith. Have another go. Right, on your feet up, lad. I think I feel this one. Try this one, Keith. Left hand, left hand. All right, let me throw an odd one. Go on, Keith. Jump up, lad. <coughs> Are you all right, son? Yeah. Get up, Keith. Come on, one, two, three, four. Now get your balance, Keen. I've showed you. Look, drop him on the wall. Drop him on the chest. My God, old man, you'll get up here. You'll, you'll rupture him. You'll you'll rupture me custard here. Up here, lad. Up here, lad. Again, get up. Better, better, better. Come on, on your feet. Four, five, six. That's the way. Try and get now. Think about what you're doing. Get your breath controlled. Deep breaths right down into your stomach, Keith. <coughs> no, no. That's all right, lad. If you want to be sick, be sick. It's not unusual. <coughs> get it up, lad. This is where all professional wrestlers begin. If they get away with only being sick the first time they get into the ring, it's not a bad start. Turn around, face it. Let's have a look. Stand yourself up. Oh, you're all right, lad. How do you feel? Oh, <laughs> believe me, you know, you get these people sitting down at home watching it on the television. Oh, I could do that, but can I swear? You can do what you like. Bloody hard. Honest. These fellows are rough. This man is not starting at the beginning. He's starting six feet under. But I'll tell you now, kid, before we even start, there's a bit of pain with the job. Mm. There's a lot of uncomfortable moments. Mm. And if you can stand these things, yeah. then we have a chance. Yeah. And that's about the top and bottom of it, man. Do you want to change your mind? Not at this stage, no. But it's now or never. No. Keith will need a trainer. Crabtree picks Tally Ho K. He's billed as being almost a gentleman. Unfortunately, his gentlemanly manners are sometimes less than perfect. Tally Ho Kay has got a reputation for being one of the dirtiest wrestlers in the business. He's also got a reputation for being one of the best trainers. Hello, Keith. This is the man who's going to turn you into a big-time wrestler. Famous Tally Ho Kay. Well, call me Peter. Tally Ho Kay is only what I use in 
All, all 11 stone of him. He needs a bit of meat on him and a bit of building up, but we'll see what we can do with him anyway. Come on, people. Let's get in here. Right? We'll, we'll have to get you so that you know how it all starts. You start with the referee's own, which is that behind the neck. There. That's it. Put that. That's it. So put my hand on there. That's it. Now then, that's the referee's own. Right? Yeah. So if I go like that, I can come underneath and take your arm with me like that. Yeah. Right? Right? You see it like that. Right? You can come like that and take it. Yeah. Take it with you. Take the arm underneath. Right. Right. So that's it. Now then, you've got there. Yeah. You bring it forward and you've got them there. You just lean back. You're just basically sitting down. Yeah. And then you do it to me, right? Yeah. Like that. Now sit it down. Right? Yeah. That's it. Lesson one, and Keith learns the referee's hold, the back hammer, and even a headlock and overthrow. That's better. The champion started this way, even Johnny Saint, the current world lightweight wrestling champion. Keith admits he finds the training tough. So were Johnny Saint's early days. Very tough. Uh, very tough. Uh, I don't mind admitting that uh, when I first started uh, wrestling, well, I'd, I'd only be 16. Uh, there have been occasions when I've walked home from the gymnasium crying. How would you train someone? Break his heart. First of all, plough him in the deck, as we call it. Scurf him. What scurf? Just plough him in the deck. You know, you, there are um, there are ways in wrestling that um, it appears that uh, one wrestler's underneath and the other wrestler's on top, and it appears that nothing's happening. But the man that's underneath. If he's a, a, a novice like yourself, mm. he can die a thousand times in as many minutes. Mm. And this is what we call scurfing. How and much work has he got to do before he can even begin to think about that lovely champion's belt? An awful lot. An awful lot. This belt represents hours and hours of hard slog, hard training, blood and guts. Keith, it it's still very much his belt, but ju let's just see if it fits. Put it round you. <laughs> now take a good look at that, because that's as near as you're ever going to get to it. <laughs> oh, sure. How much do you think you weigh, Keith? Uh, about 11 stone. About 11, yeah. What's the truth, Bob? Well, Bob Sweeney, a former wrestler, thing. now runs a chain of health clubs. Half his customers are there to put weight on half to take it off. No prizes for guessing Keith's there problem. It's just about 10 stone 11 pounds. 10 stone 11? Yeah. So what sort of weight is that for a wrestler? Well, not too good I'm afraid Keith because uh, some of those guys will really bounce you around so I think you ought to gain at least another 10 pounds. That's what we should be aiming for. So he's working towards what, 12 stone? Uh, yes, round about 12 stone. Okay, we're going to lift the bar. Above your chest, hold it there, now down to the chest and just push it back. Okay, push, push. That's a good test. We think you should be able to lift 150 pounds if you want to be a professional wrestler, so we certainly need to increase his strength. He puts Keith on what he calls the Olympic diet. It's a high protein diet of meat, eggs and cheese, and no less than five pints of milk and water. For the next three months, Keith is going to eat this much every day. Then his school dinner, and the protein supplements, potions, and no less than 34 vitamin pills he's going to have to pop. And with that lot inside him, he's going to have to run three miles every day and find time for an hour's weightlifting if he's ever going to lift that 150 pounds. There's not much time left for family life. Mm. Would you be happier if he didn't do any more? Yes. Quite honestly, yeah. Mm. Would you try and persuade him to give up, do you think? No, because, you know, it, there'd be no point really, because I know he wouldn't now. He's the sort of person, you know, carry it through. You know, come what may, so I'd be wasting my time, really. Come in, referee's on. That's it. Good, good, good. You're nearly pure. Sorry, he trains twice a week with Tally 
okay. Still learning the basic holds like the full Nelson. And gradually, he learns to dish out the treatment as well as take it. That's it. That's good. That's good. Go on, you can put what you want on then. You've got me trapped. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I can take you straight over top if I want, but I'll not do. Well, they say every wrestler dreads a certain hold, and the thing I dread more than anything else is the slam. You know, I, 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 put you down. You're held upside down for a few seconds, and those few seconds seem like hours. Then eventually, you feel yourself going down very hard, and the only thing you've got in your head is feet down, feet down. I put you up. I, 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 put you down. Your wind goes, for one thing. You can't breathe. There's no way you can breathe after you've been slammed. And especially the first few times, it felt as though your ribs were just shattering. You know those cartoons like Tom and Jerry where the ribs shattered? It really felt like that. And I couldn't really get up the first time you did it. Um, you're almost paralysed. OK, and I lift you up. Uh, slam you down. Yeah. OK? Right, lad, come on. Head up. Right, okay, we'll not do another. Are you alright? Yeah. You sure? No. <laughs> One of the worst things from the spectator point of view is, is posting. That looks horrendous. Have you tried that yet? Yeah, I've been posted. Uh, it is bad, it's very bad. Get out there. You're thrown against the post. Now, if you try and avoid the post, uh, you can meet with the most dreadful accident. Your legs can come either side of the post, for instance. Uh, he, could, he could fall out of the ring. So when you're going to get posted, there's only one thing to do. Go at it, turn in on it, and just bash it with your back. <laughs> and that is better than... Those driving. hooks really go in, do they? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. The pad... I mean, there is padding. <laughs> but believe me, you don't think of the padding when you feel like three iron bars sticking in your back. Right, I've got you down there. I've got... He's not been on the receiving end all the time. He's had his brief moments of glory. I managed to get him in a full Nelson as well because um, it's a matter of catching him off his balance. You see, I know what to do. I know, I know what the moves are. But it's difficult getting your man off balance so that you can actually carry out those moves and holds. That's, that's a difficult But thing. it's a good moment when you get him, is it? Oh, yeah. When I've got him in that full Nelson, I'm king of the world. <laughs> right. Hey. Man, yes. That were better. They're okay. Don't worry about bloody head. Hurting if you're gonna do it. Do it. I don't want my head ripping off. Two months to go, and Crabtree wants to see Keith in action. He's going to ask him to fight for real, and top referee Joe Durazio will make sure Keith sticks to the rules. Most people think that wrestling's fixed. They'd be surprised to hear there are any rules. If it, if it's fixed, nobody's told me. You know, I, I wish, you know, we've spent so much time in hospital, wrestlers. You know, I could go, I could give you a list, you know. They spend so much time in hospital, and being injured, and this broken, and that broken, that it would never happen. It's never going to happen to you. You are never going to get cauliflower ears sitting there, are you? Now, well, I might get one tonight, you see? Because There's I'm an element in... of showmanship, though, in wrestling, isn't there? The showmanship in wrestling, <clears throat> as in football, I mean, you think of any football you like, I mean, we've got some good showmen in football, man. but they don't employ that showmanship to an extent where it's going to cost them a match. Anything you want to know, Keith? Not really, I, I accept uh, if I'm in a situation where I'm going to have to submit. Yeah. What, how do you submit? Because well, I tell you, you whatever yeah. you do, don't wait and decide about it. If you're in a position where you're going to submit, submit. Scream. Don't be ashamed. People have done it before you, and if we do it after you, say, yes, submit, yes, yes. And that's it. Bang on the mat. I know what you mean. I shall be there. He's fighting his trainer, Tally Ho Kay. For this test, they're no longer the best of friends. They've got to be the worst of enemies. Crabtree expects Keith to survive four rounds. Go two or three basic moves in my mind and I'm just going to think of them and nothing else. I'm not going to think of anything else. Are you nervous? Mm -hmm. Are you frightened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you panicking? No, I'm not panicking. In a quiet way I am, but I haven't gone to pieces yet. Clear the ring. Round one. Yeah! 
Keith starts well. He gets Kay in a standing full Nelson. But Keith hasn't got the strength to keep him there. Kay is soon back on top. Before Keith even knows what's happened, he's got him in a single leg Boston with an arm bar. It's a submission hold. Bend those joints any further and they'll snap. But Keith won't submit. He survives that, but only to suffer the throw he dreads most. The slam. Still stunned by the slam, he's not quick enough to avoid a hammerlock. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This time, he does submit. Kay is now winning by one submission. One more, and he's won the match. You want to hang about? Carry on. Yeah, yeah. Clear the ring, fourth and last round. Uh -huh. Remember, Kay has taught Keith everything he knows. So how can Keith ever hope to take him by surprise? It may seem unfair, but it's how all wrestlers learn the game. Keith lets Kay get his arm again, and he's in trouble. It's a standard wrestling technique. Weaken part of your opponent's body and keep going for it. And keep on going for it till he submits. Not much may seem to be happening, but as Johnny Saint said, Keith is dying a thousand deaths down there. He's being scurfed. He won't submit. He's saved by the bell. That's it. <laughs> I was just asking what doesn't hurt it to be a shorter answer. You got enough strength there to get out of the ring? If you catch me, I'm out. <laughs> Come on, Dan. After four rounds of Keith's first ever fight, what's Max Crabtree's assessment? I looked at your face, you know, when you got in at the beginning, and you got that that look about you that you were going to lose. <laughs> now, if I can see it, so can the other lad you're on, whether he can see it as well. You've got to get in there and really go in to tear him apart. You've got to mentally make yourself hard. Don't give in to pain. When Kay had your arm up your back, you ought to have fought it. You laid there and you let him twist it. He'd have twisted the bloody thing off if you'd have left him there like, you're going to fight out. How many marks out of ten? In my eyes, as the man that has to put it all together, about three. Crabtree puts together over 2,000 contests a year. Two million people pay to see them, and TV fights can command audiences of up to ten million. But wrestling has to be the least respected of any sport. Newspapers knock it, bookmakers won't take bets on it. I wonder how many of the people who watch it believe it's for real. As part of his training, Tally Ho Kay takes Keith to watch all his bouts. Perhaps Keith will pick up a bit of the showmanship that the crowds pay to see. But which is showmanship and which is for real? Does Kay's arm really hurt? 
or is that just to get the audience going? And watch K-Punch. It's against the rules and the audience love it. But was it a real punch? There's only one person who knows if that really did hurt, and he's being kicked out of the ring. He comes back at K with a flying drop kick. But couldn't K have seen that coming? Or perhaps it doesn't matter. It made the audience scream, and that's what they've paid for. But those who say it's all fixed and that they don't really get hurt should watch this. Kay's opponent takes a posting. From his ringside seat, does Keith think it's all fixed? <laughs> Absolutely not. I've got the scars myself now to prove it, apart from the pain that I suffer just about every single day. And what about Peter Kay? Does he get hurt? Yes, yes. I've, I've, he probably won't like me telling you this, but I've actually had to help him out of the hall on one occasion because he couldn't walk. One man who sat at the ringside for over 20 years is the voice of TV wrestling, World of Sports' Kent Walton. Over the years, he's heard the knockers describe wrestling as a carefully rehearsed play where the wrestlers are told beforehand who's going to win. This is Ken Walters for you. What does he say to the non-believers? A man called Don Vines, a big heavyweight wrestler, was standing in the ring near my end, one my end of the ring, edge of the ring one day, and uh, a, another equally big man gave him a forearm smash. His head went to the side and two of his teeth came straight out by me. I found one of them. There it is. And I've kept it ever since as a souvenir. Somebody says the forearm smash is not, uh, is pulled, is not genuine. Well, it's very difficult to get a tooth out without hitting him. Is it all rehearsed beforehand? Uh, an eight bout contest, of five rounds of, uh, um, a bout, 40, 40 minutes, rehearsed. Very tricky. <laughs> One thing can go wrong in the first round that'll throw the whole thing if you rehearse anything. No, no, it's, it's always, this is always said, of course, by the knockers. But the only way to find out, really, believe me, is to go, is to go in the ring for. Because there are only two men know how much is showmanship, how much is fixed, how much is pulled, how much is really hard. And they're both in the ring. Be one of them and you'll find out all about it. But not until. So a couple of wrestlers are not told before they go into the ring, you go down in round five. Oh. You go down in round two. Do you believe that I, if I'm wrestling you tonight, I'm going to agree to go down in round five, take a dive, so that you can win the bout and go on winning and get to the top of the bill quite easily before me. And therefore you'll be earning all this vast difference in money. No, I think if, I, if I've if i chosen this as my profession, I would want to earn as much from it as I could. And the only way I can earn is by winning and getting to the top of the bill. Before Keith gets his name on the Albert Hall bill, Crabtree's got to find him an opponent. What about him? Strongman Alan Dennison. A trained man, always trained hard with the weights. Um, Fitness for natural. Doesn't smoke a drink. He, um, far too strong for Keith. <laughs> yes. And that one we know. Sid oh, Cooper. Oh my goodness me. Well, this, this character, um, Sid already knows the, the strength of Keith. He, um, Yeah, I, I think Keith knows the strength of Sid as well. <laughs> Put him to one side. What about him? Now, he's a young man that I think could probably give Keith a fair match. John Naylor. The only advantage, of course, is that Naylor has far more experience in the professional ring. But, again, like I say, he's, he's, um, it's a case of matching him with somebody that he wouldn't feel overawed with. And I think that John could possibly be our man. How's that going to look on, on the big Albert Hall poster, Keith Rawlinson? Well, Paul, Keith is not a good fighting name. Rawlinson, not bad. So what do you want to call him? Well, as I've seen Keith and I've seen his charisma, I would think we don't want to give him a, a name he can't live up to. I mean, obviously he can't be 
Ripper Rawlinson, because he isn't a Ripper, and he's certainly not a roughhouse Rawlinson. Perhaps something like, what about Rip? Something easy. R.I.P. Rip Rawlinson. R.I.P.? I think so, yes. Yeah. Something easy. R.I.P. means other things. Well, I think it would about suit him, Paul. Let's uh, let's not get to um, let's not give the uh, let's not give the boy something he can't live up to. Something easy. Yeah, Rip Rollins. Keith's now up to his target of twelve stone, but before he can take on John Naylor, he's got to lift that one hundred and fifty pounds that all professional wrestlers should be able to lift. Okay. Push, push. Yeah. Yes. Great. Good. Well, he had 155 pounds there. <laughs> so we just cheated him a little bit, didn't let him know he's gone way over the 150 target. At 24 stones, twice Keith's weight, Big Daddy, wrestling superstar. No bodybuilding problems for him. He'll be top of the bill on Keith's big night. My grandmother weighed 22 stone. <laughs> and my mother weighed 15 stone 7 and she could carry a bag of coal up four flights of stairs. And so when it came round to add in weight, to becoming a super heavyweight, uh, I found it quite easily. Can you remember being in Keith's position, your first night in the ring? Yes, I was absolutely terrified. And um, I had thoughts about actually uh, nipping out the back door and clearing <laughs> off <laughs> and going out for a nice walk, forgetting it all. But uh, I went through with it and I was glad I did go through with it. What advice would you give him? Just do your best. You can't do no more than that. And uh, rest assured that we in the wrestling profession, if you only last 10 seconds, know that you had the courage to walk up them steps into that ring. And that, that does take courage. I see. Go on, Keith, get him over. This is Keith's last session in the gym. Next time he goes into a ring, it'll be at the Royal Albert Hall. Max Crabtree wants to make sure he's ready for it. Go on, Keith, now. At long last, Keith's looking like a wrestler. He's got the gear, he's got the boots, and when he's fighting someone his own size, he's got the skill. That's it. Now up again. Drag him up. You get up out of it. Up, move yourself. Don't sit there. Right. Right. Now then. That's it. Go on. That's it. Has he trapped it? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You'll try to get on him, Tom. He's been training with Peter Kay's son, Tony. Tony's not a professional wrestler, but he's an experienced amateur. Now then, that's it. Go on. Go on, now then, you're giving him a bit of pain. Up. Up, right, Tom. Get up. Get up. Get up. Move yourself. Right, again. That's it. Come on. Up. Up. Right. Go on. That's it. That's good. After three months, Crabtree's final assessment. The training's over. Your improvement is, is good. Mm. You're right, you're doing the things right, you're putting things together. You are um, shaping up like a, a professional wrestler now. The last time we, um, we got together here in the gym, about a month ago, um, I sort of marked you down for three out of ten. Mm. Well, today, I would say we'll make it 7 out of 10. <laughs> what about the poster? Let's have a look at that. Yes, Who's he up against? Yes, well, this mm. is interesting. This is the poster, Keith. It'll be all over London on the tube. So, oh, yeah. Where's your name, Keith? Uh, yeah. Rick Rawlingson. Uh. One more thing now, Keith, to make you into a wrestler. The final thing. What about Oh, you? look at that. The name and everything oh, there, Keith. <laughs> come, on, Real. come on, let's have it on, Keith. That's a right fighting right, uh, man's gown. <laughs> yeah, that's a right fighting man's got here. Yeah. Give us a twirl, Keith. Better be careful how I do this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Wind your back, that's it. He's suffered a lot for this moment. The moment Rip Rawlinson enters the Royal Albert Hall to take his place on an all-star right. professional wrestling bill. Yeah, one of the wrestlers. First time here. Yeah. Right.
your thing, Keith. Uh, that one. I'll look for the red. Look for the red. Yeah. Well, this is your first time in a professional dressing room, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. It's very frightening as well, I can tell you. I All hope right. you're well. <laughs> I just had the hardest three months of my life, you know, so I'm just going out there and if I can just get through two or three rounds, I'll be quite happy. There'll be 6,000 people watching. Judy and the boys from Keith's Wrestling Club will be on the front row. I don't know what's real when we did it 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see the shakes haven't done out of fashion. Plonk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel him better? Yeah. <laughs> Greater a lion for a day than a lamb for a lifetime. <laughs> Who said that? Mussolini. <laughs> it's no wrecking for Keith, but it's tough for Judy too. She's never seen him wrestle before. I suppose the worst thing, you know, would be if he was badly injured, which, I mean, could happen, you know. What stage do you think he's in at the moment? Um, slightly nervous. That was the last I saw of him. He's probably very nervous now. Can I say? I better not say how I feel, but very frightened. Are you really frightened? Yeah. Not just the John Naylor, it's, uh, it's a whole ordeal, you know. Stepping in the ring and the people and it's a bit worse when you've got people you know. I mean, I've got people down here who've come to watch me, you know, so I want to put up a reasonable show. You know, for them if nothing else. Upstairs, the matches have started. Keith will be third on. I had a doing match. Feeling better off stopping on there, kid. I think you said of coming out. In the first contest, one wrestler's had the ropes twisted round his neck and he's been left there to choke. I don't think I can put me in. You can't get back. Well, it has to happen. That wasn't fixed. Those injuries are for real. Feel you sorry for yourself, you northern heathen. Northern heathen. <laughs> this is not what he needs to see just before he gets into the ring. So Big Daddy's trying to take Keith's mind off it. The second match has started. The next one will be Keith's. He's on after Johnny Saint. That's quite an act to follow. <laughs> right, third contest, Rawlinson and Naylor. Come on, John, let's have the held outside, please. Yeah, thank you. Now, come on, keep it. Yes. Don't let us down. How many don't let Wait a second. Is a second there? May we have the wrestlers for match number three? Right, go on, you take him. Good luck, Keith. Right, lad. He knows the moves, he knows the throws, but he's never had to cope with the lights, or the crowds, or even that Albert Hall atmosphere. Ladies and gentlemen, this a very special contest. It's made at catch weight with six rounds of three minutes each, with two falls or two submissions or a knockout to decide the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner on my left, I present you with very great pleasure the golden ace from Wigan. Will you welcome John Naylor? That's the man Keith's trained three months to meet, half a stone heavier, ten years more experienced. And ladies and gentlemen, in the red corner on my right, his opponent, that young man from Burnley, who's making his very first appearance at the Royal Albert Halls, will you welcome Rip Rawlinson. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, your referee for this contest, Mr. Joe D'Arezio. All bouts start with the referee telling both wrestlers to defend themselves at all times. The first round.
Keith's taking the ref's advice too much to heart. He's trying to defend himself. He shouldn't be attacking. He's yet to score a throw. Now he could be in real trouble, but he's on the ropes and the referee has to break the hold. That's in the rules. Keith's attacking for the first time. He throws Naylor and goes for his arm. The crowd love it, but it doesn't work. Naylor's claiming Keith's leg. He's got him in a single leg Boston with a leg bar. It's one of the most painful holds in wrestling. Keith remembers it well when Tally Ho K was on the other end. No. 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 A professional would have submitted by now. No. Watch it now, watch it, watch it. If Naylor can keep that hold on long enough, he can do a lot of damage to that leg. After half a minute of torture, Naylor lets it go. Get on your feet, Keith. Come on, get up. One, two, three. He's weakened Keith's leg, and if he gets another chance, he can go for it again. This is what professional wrestling is all about. <laughs> Keith can hardly walk. How can he hope to defend himself now? <laughs> Naylor takes him with what they call a side head chancery. He's trying to fight back, but he's not fast enough. Three, four, five. That leg is really giving him trouble. He's going to need all the help his second can give him. Round two and Naylor has him in a head scissors. Look at Keith's arm. Much more and it'll snap. But he's keeping those shoulders off the canvas. And that was a kick from Naylor. And that has made Keith cross. He's attacking. But he's not quick enough to get a full Nelson, and he's on the ropes. Naylor's got to break the hold. <laughs> Naylor's taking that weakened leg again. No time to think about it this time. Keith submits. Naylor is winning by one submission, and that leg of Keith's will need a lot of work on it. Ladies and gentlemen, in round two, the first fall of the match with a submission to Wigan's John Naylor. Peter Kay can't just sit at the ringside and watch him take the punishment. He can see that Keith's making the same mistake over and over again. Don't let him get all your legs. Put it out at road. That's what it's all about. Okay. Keep yourself moving. Right. Move it. Don't let him get hold of it when he goes for it. Shake yourself. Shake yourself. Are you okay? Move yourself. Move yourself. Round three. He's actually wrestling his style on the ground. He should get on his feet. And Naylor goes straight for the leg. It's what any professional would do. Weaken part of your opponent and keep going till he submits. Watch it now! Watch it! Those ropes are less than a foot away. If he can grab them, Naylor's got to break the hold. But Keith's not going to take the easy way out. He's going to survive this if it kills him. Rollins! Joe can't stand there and watch him take it any longer. So he takes the decision for Keith and puts Keith's hand on the ropes. Two, three, four.
Keith's halfly staggered to his feet, and Naylor goes for that leg again. But he's got to turn Keith over to get another single leg Boston, and Keith's now fighting back like he's never fought before. He's not going to let Naylor get him over, so Naylor has to try another move. That's given him the confidence to really fight back. He's got Naylor in a full Nelson. And a side head chancery. He can't have much strength left after that effort. And it's the end of round three. Round four, Keith is still in his corner. It's all over for Rick Rawlinson. Are you all right, Russell? Yeah. You should have let him, you let him go for your leg and then you let him have it again and again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of the fourth round, Rip Rawlinson unfortunately has had to retire from the contest. And the winner, therefore, John Naylor. Show your appreciation, if you will, for Rip Rawlinson. Even the ref applauds him as they carry Rip Rawlinson from the ring. It'll be a long time before his leg lets him forget those three muscle-tearing holds. Are you okay, kid? You kept letting him bloody take your leg. As soon as you knew it, you didn't even go in for it. Huh? And you let it, you forgot everything. I said, come in at referee's old. When he was coming in, you let him take your leg as he came in. Norman, is anything broke, you think? I don't think so, no. I think he's angry How do you feel now? Not very happy. I just hope he never goes in the ring again. How many rounds did I last? I don't know how many rounds. No, I'm not disappointed. I only wanted to Listen, if, if the lad had gone one, it's OK. That's all that matters. He went in there and tried, and there's a lot of them that won't yeah, try. Tonight, in my opinion, I've watched a young lad go in there and show a lot of bottles. For me, the boy's okay as far as I'm going. In my book, I rate him. Go for him! Yeah! yeah. Cross put again, pull him over. Go on, get him. Come on, come on, son. Come on, Keith, fight him, fight him, fight him, lad. Keith, he, 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 he forgot the stuff. You, you know what? You can't blame him for forgetting because the atmosphere of the place and the people i mean it, it must it's shattering the first bout you have it always is i'm putting you up put you down yeah right come on let's get up right yeah so it's as simple as that come here again right i come like that i put my hand there like that in my wildest dreams i only hope to last two or three right and in that sense, my dreams come true because I, I did last two or three rounds. That's it. Marked out of ten after tonight? For me, let's give him full marks. Ten out of ten. He got in there, and uh, God bless him, he got in there in front of me the public, and he had a go. He's done what lots of fellas think they could do. He did have a goal. 